In this video, I will create a login API endpoint, implement JWT token, add authentication on endpoints. I will remove parentheses from this endpoint name. I will add login controller in a controller folder. Select this template, API controller empty, controller name, login controller. In this controller, I will add one method or API endpoint. For login, we use HTTP POST. In action result, we will return user DTO class object that will have user info. Method name login that will take one parameter from request body. Login binding model. So we will send this object in a request body. Add try catch block. In catch, we will return bad request object and we will send exception message. In DTO project, I will add user DTO class. This class must be public because we will use this in other projects. I will add following properties in our DTO class ID, full name, email, roles, token, and claims. In login controller, add namespace of DTO project. User DTO class, error will fix. Now I will add login binding model class. I will add one more project for common things. Select this class library template, project name claim.common. Delete this class. Add folder name binding models. In this folder, I will add login binding model class. Make this public. I will add two properties username and password. Add a reference of a common project. Login binding model class error will fix. Now I will inject two services from Microsoft Identity Core, Sign In Manager and User Manager. Sign In Manager is a concrete class and it's responsible for authenticating a user. For example, Sign In In and Sign In Out are user. User Manager is a concrete class that manages the user. This class create, update, and delete the user. I will use these services in a login method var result await sign in manager dot password sign in async pass email and password i did not create login binding model class object i will create login binding model class object model dot email model dot password is persistent set false next i will create object of user dto class i will add if condition result not equal to null and result dot succeeded when username and password cracked, then succeeded will have true value. If succeeded true, then we will get user info by user manager service. User manager dot find by email async pass email. Next, I will get claims of user. User manager dot get claim async dot result dot to list. Use result when you don't want to use await keyword. So I will initialize claim list. I will use for each loop and add all claims in a user DTO class. Next, I will get user role. User manager get role async pass user object dot result. We have one role, so we can use first or default. If this null, use empty string. If role is admin, then add admin claim in a claim list. If role is manager, then add manager claim in a claim list. Next, I will add user info in a user detail class. For example, full name, role, email. If succeeded is false, then I will return bad request. In bad request, I will return email or password is incorrect. Return user detail object. Start the application. You can see login API endpoint in a request. We have to send email and password. We have added one user in a first migration. I will copy email and password from FDP context class. Click on execute. We have email and password in a binding model class. Succeeded is false.
we are using correct email and password but sign in manager service is not authenticating a user reason behind this issue is that we have missed few properties of a user when we see the data in migration i will add this data manually asp.net user click on edit rows add normalize username and email it should be in capital add security stamp a random value now we will try click on execute now succeeded is true in our response we have user info role and claims i will update data setting script appdb contacts file after that you don't need to add normalize field manually i will add normalize username and normalize email i will add in a capital form dot to upper this function convert this string into uppercase security stamp a good value next i will implement jwt token in program file i will configure authentication service builder dot service dot add authentication in lambda function i will configure authentication option option dot default authentication scheme will be jwt barrel default we need to add one more package for jwt comment this line because visual studio will compile the code when it install the package then we will get error so comment this line go to nuget search jwt barrel select this one select the project and click on install button add namespace jwt bearer default dot authentication scheme default scheme will be jwt bearer default dot authentication scheme default challenge scheme will be jwt bearer default dot authentication scheme next we will configure jwt option token validation parameters validate issuer true validate issuer sign in key true issuer sign in key this key is important if anyone has this key then he can generate any type of token and that token will valid now i will add this key in a constant file and later i will move this key in a app setting.json file this secret key must be long otherwise token will not generate i will declare issuer and audience key name secret key constant dot add namespace of a helper project dot secret key validate issuer true valid issuer constant dot issuer valid audience constant dot audience require expiration time true in login controller i will add generate token method this method will take two parameters app user and user claims i will create list of claims list type is system dot security dot claims dot claim first i will add standard jwt claims you can add custom data but don't add sensitive data because this token can be easily decoded Now I will add user claim in a token. This select operator equivalent to for each loop. It will iterate one by one and it will create a list of claim type. Now I will add this list in a claim list. I will use add range method to add range in a list. Get security key from constant file. I will create sign in credential object using key and security algorithm. 
next i will create jwt security token in this subject i will add issuer audience i will get these two from constant file claims expire date this token will expire in 30 days you can set any time last thing jwt security token handle dot write i will pass this token object it will return token as a string i will return this string now i will call this method form login method here now we will test this functionality start the application copy email and password from app db contacts class click on execute you can see token now i will decode this token go to jwt token website paste token here this token don't have claims in add range method i did not add role claims list add this role claim copy this email and password json object now we start the application copy the token go to jwt token website now you can see all claims we have enabled jwt based authentication in application we can add authorization on any endpoints by adding authorized attribute on endpoints we have two api endpoints in a claim controller i will add authorized attribute on get admin claim method so this endpoint will check validation of a token when it's receive request if token is valid then it will allow the access otherwise it will return 401 error unauthorized access error in program.cs file add authentication middleware before authorization middleware hierarchy is important app dot use authentication start the application we will test authentication on a postman because swagger don't have authentication feature right now we have to enable authentication feature in a swagger we will enable later you can watch my video how to add authentication feature in a swagger link in our description get token through login api copy token authorization type bearer token paste token here get admin claims send api request you will get 401 error i will copy this api url get manager claims send api request you will get data because we did not add authorization on it it returned data send api request with token in a postman you can see data in a body tab jwt authentication working fine if we send api request without token we get 401 error this is a token based authentication you get token through login api then you can access private api calls through token i will end this video here see you in the next video